So I talked about Siakam like two weeks ago. I don't remember anything I said in that video, but I'm going to try to not focus on Pascal so much in this. And we're going to take it to the rest of the Raptors because I've been thinking about where they're going to finish in the East. And I mean, there's a chance that Masai Ujiri trades the whole damn roster by the deadline. So you know, it's possible that everything I say here is not going to matter, but... With Lowry's salary and Gasol's salary as well, and the fact that I just I don't think they want to completely bottom out. I know they wanted to at one point when they made the Rudy Gay trade. They wanted it to be a tanking move, and then the team got good. But I just think in this present situation, they don't want to turn this team into like a really bad team by the end of the season. And I also think they want to have kind of like a, a honeymoon year, if you will, off of the finals. So I, I just think there's a chance this team could still be pretty good. And then after that, they're going to have to make decisions because there's a whole bunch of expiring contracts and all that stuff. But when I look at the East and when I talk myself in and out of certain teams, whether it's Oladipo's health or uh, no more Horford for the Celtics or... Um, I like Miami's team, but at the same time, I don't know how great offensively they're really going to be. And I just start to be like, can the Raptors sneak into the third seed? <laughs> because there's kind of some cases you can make for them. Number one, even with Kawhi gone, I still think this team can be the best defensive team in the league. There's other candidates, no doubt about it. But between Lowry, Gasol, Siaka, Mbaka, and uh, Ananobi coming back, maybe, I mean... Obviously, Ananobi is not the defender that Kawhi is when they're both in their best days. But Kawhi was not on his best defensive day for most of last season. And he missed like 20-something games. So, regular season speaking, if OG just really pops defensively, which I think we would all agree is definitely possible when you look at how good he was in his rookie season and all the, the wingspan and all that... And he plays, like, the whole year, which might not happen, but I don't think that's as crazy of a difference to Kawhi last season as you might initially think. Even if I don't think OG is, like, going to have a defensive player of the year case or anything like that. He's probably not even going to make an all-defense team, but he could still be very good. So, I think that will keep this team in a lot of games switchability is still there. They also lost Danny Green, but it seems like Norman Powell is going to be stepping in, and yeah, Danny Green's a better shooter, but defensively, I think Norman is not too far behind him either, and you still have Nick Nurse, who's really smart and is going to get creative, and I just think there's enough stuff here to where we think this team can just get a lot of stops, and offensively, it'll be rough. I mean, there's a well, Siakam is going to be like, whatever, high teens, low 20s. After that, it is going to be a little tough. There's not going to be the contested shots and the turnaround jumpers that Kawhi gave them, or even DeRozan gave them before Kawhi. But I still think the combination of everything can be enough between Van Fleet just being pretty good. I mean, I'm not expecting him to do what he did in the finals. That was kind of a lightning in a bottle moment for him but if he can continue being one of the better fringe starter backup point guards in the league which he was before a disappointing regular season last year and then he of course got it back in the finals like I said but if he can be pretty good if Lowry's shooting does not fall off a cliff if you think it will, I mean, there's reason to suggest it will. It's been dipping down the past couple of seasons, but if Lowry can average what? If Kyle Lowry can average 15 points while shooting like 37% from three and doing his normal Kyle Lowry defense playmaking things, then that's uh, still a really positive uh, player to have. And even so, like regular season-wise last year, he shot 35% on seven threes a game. Like that's really not that bad. It's worse than what it was for him, but that's still pretty good. And then he was a little better in the playoffs, so we have that. 
We hope Siakam's offensive improvement keeps on being a thing. And then you just kind of hope that they can just grind out some wins, right? Marc Gasol, not going to give you 19 points a game anymore, but smart passer, can still post up on switches, and he's not going to do anything stupid offensively, and maybe his shooting can even take a bit of a step. Don't really know there. Similar things can be said with Ibaka, although his playmaking is terrible. And again, I'm saying the offense going to be awkward at times where it seems like nobody can make a shot, whether it's Siakam is like 0 for 3 from the corner or um, Norman Powell, OG, Gasol's a little hesitant from outside. Like, I recognize all that stuff, but I can just picture this team winning a lot of games with a score of like 101 to 98, you know? <laughs> Now, they have taken a swing on a couple guys. They got Rondé Hollis Jefferson and Stanley Johnson. Those dudes are like the same type of player, even if their styles are a little different. But it's the same thing. Good defensively, good athletes, offense. Eh. And they have a whole bunch of dudes who I've never heard of. And maybe some of them will pop, maybe some of them won't, whatever it may be. But, you know, it's just the idea of a bunch of good, smart defenders who have won a championship together so they have that chemistry and all that just kind of figuring out a way to get through the NBA regular season and being better than you might initially think they will be on top of again just the weird stuff going on with some other teams in the east also should be said and now granted not exactly the same team I get that from last season but they were really good without Kawhi whether it was him off the floor or him not playing at all So yeah, I feel good about Toronto. Now, I guess if things go south, it's this this team's offense just craters to the point where it doesn't matter how good they are defensively. I could picture them getting out to a slow start and then by maybe the 20th or 30th game of the year, they go on a bit of a run. So yeah, I like this team. Then maybe they're my official third seed pick I don't know I think they'll be up there definitely